Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 591. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to look at the three cannabis ETFs and decide which one is best because These three have a lot of similarities and some differences, but one really stands out to me as my favorite. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you probably know which one that is. But for purposes of analysis, we're going to look at three separate cannabis ETFs. We're also going to review some information from an article in Investor's Business Daily That was called New U.S. Marijuana ETF Lights Up as Feds Mull Cannabis Legislation. So here's what the article says. A third marijuana stock ETF began trading in the U.S. Tuesday, one day before the U.S. House of Representatives met to discuss how to end federal prohibition of cannabis. Innovation shares, the cannabis ETF, symbol THCX, rose 0.2% on its first day of trading, but ended lower for the week amid pressure in cannabis stocks. The fund tracks the 35-stock Innovation Labs Cannabis Index, a modified market cap-weighted index that gets rebalanced monthly. Canada stocks made up nearly three-quarters of the portfolio and the U.S. about a quarter. All right, so I want to cover some terms here. First, when it says it's market cap weighted, that means that the larger companies that have a larger size market capitalization, market cap, are going to carry more weight in the fund than the smaller companies. So the bigger companies will have a greater percentage of investment capital in them. It's also talking about rebalancing. Rebalancing is when you have a particular asset allocation. Let's say you have four different stocks and you have 25% in each one. Maybe one stock does really well during that quarter and it grows to 50% of the portfolio and another one grows to 35% of the portfolio. Well, during rebalancing, they would sell the amount over the 25% and take each allocation back to four allocations of 25%. So that's rebalancing, and that's going to happen on a quarterly basis where they're going to sell the winners and get back to the original percentages that the fund had. The article goes on to say the top five holdings are Tilray, Kronos Group, Aurora Cannabis, Canopy Growth, and GW Pharmaceuticals. They account for nearly 40% of assets. Of these marijuana stocks, GW Pharmaceuticals has soared nearly 80% this year. Kronos and Aurora Cannabis are up more than 35% each, while Canopy Growth is up 27%, but Tilray is down 39%. So I want to pause there and just remind you that GW Pharmaceuticals is the first company to get a patent on a cannabinoid. You see, cannabis has different cannabinoids that can be arranged in different ways and patented as drugs. So what GW Pharmaceuticals did was they patented a combination that helped with epilepsy and the drug is called Epidiolex. So it does have a patent and that has really helped people with epilepsy. It stopped seizures in people and it really has seen great results. So a lot of Money has flowed into GW Pharmaceuticals, and hence their stock price has gone up a lot. You might also recognize the name of Tilray, which was the first cannabis company to IPO, and it didn't have very many shares. So it went crazy, went up to something like 300, and then has dropped back, now down 39%. The article goes on to say, as a pure play cannabis ETF, 
TCHX focuses on companies in the legal marijuana, CBD, and hemp industries. The portfolio does not rely on alcohol or tobacco stocks to provide exposure to this burgeoning global growth story, Matt Markowitz, Innovation Shares Managing Director, said in a press release. Investors entering the cannabis space have demanded a diversified, liquid, and cost-efficient vehicle to invest in the green rush, and we are ready to deliver on that ask. Most marijuana stocks are based in Canada, but also listed on U.S. exchanges. U.S. pot companies such as MedMen and Curaleaf have gone public in Canada, where cannabis is legal. If marijuana gets legalized at the federal level in the U.S., the three ETFs could see a huge rush of inflows. If legalization occurs, Cowan & Company estimates U.S. marijuana sales could reach $80 billion by 2030. According to Deloitte, legal recreational cannabis sales this year could reach $4.34 billion. And Canaccord Genuity, in a recent note, raised its 2019 to 2022 compound annual growth rate estimate for U.S. marijuana retail sales to 20% from 19%. So I want to pause and just remind you that it's really the medicinal benefits of cannabis that I'm so excited about, not the recreational use. This is not about people smoking and get feeling a high. This is about being able to separate out the THC, the thing that creates the high, and give people medicinal benefits, things that are actually helping people. For example, there is a huge market for dogs and for use with dogs. I give my dog some CBD because she has some tumors on her hip and it is helping to reduce those tumors. So there are different benefits of CBD, of hemp. I take a hemp protein, which is legal in the United States, 100%, get it at the grocery store, and I happen to prefer it over some other types of protein powders. But I have zero interest in smoking any marijuana. So just to be clear, there are tremendous benefits of hemp, of CBD, of non-THC types of cannabis that are very helpful to people. When I talk about cannabis, I'm talking about health benefits. I'm talking about medicinal uses and pain relievers being able to be created that can replace opioids, that are non-addictive, that don't kill people. There are some tremendous benefits of using these natural methods. The article goes on to say, Illinois is the latest state to legalize recreational marijuana, joining Alaska, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, Nevada, Oregon, Vermont, Washington, and Washington, D.C. With several regulatory catalysts on the horizon in the U.S. and abroad, the current cannabis environment presents an exciting opportunity for investors, Markowitz said. One area which has witnessed explosive growth since the signing of last year's U.S. Farm Bill is the hemp-derived CBD industry. Several of the companies in the portfolio are actively participating in this CBD boom by cultivating hemp, providing extraction services, or by using CBD for applications in the pharmaceutical, health, and consumer wellness markets, he noted. ETF MG Alternative Harvest, symbol MJ, the first U.S.-listed pure play marijuana ETF, started as a different fund. Before its December 26, 2017 launch, The fund was the Tierra XP Latin America Real Estate ETF. With the conversion, it began tracking the Prime Alternative Harvest Index, which tracks companies in the legal marijuana market. The ETF now has $1.1 billion in assets, according to Morningstar. The top five holdings are GW Pharmaceuticals, Kronos Group, Tilray, Aurora Cannabis, and Canopy Growth. Those made up about 39% of assets. All right, so we have a new ETF that came out. That is the THCX ETF. And we have MJ, which is my favorite cannabis ETF, which has been out for a while and therefore has the most assets, $1.1 billion in assets. But you'll notice the top five holdings are exactly the same in both funds. They're just in a different order of which is the largest holding with MJ having GW Pharmaceuticals being their largest holding. Now there's a third ETF, and it's called the Advisor Shares Pure Cannabis ETF, symbol Y-O-L-O, like you only live once, launched April 18th. 
and it's an actively managed ETF with a dedicated cannabis investment mandate in the U.S., according to advisor shares. The $59.1 million fund owns growers, distributors, real estate companies, biotech, and pharma companies. It does not invest in big tobacco, alcohol suppliers, or pesticide companies that have some exposure to cannabis. YOLO's top five holdings as of Thursday were Organigram, Innovative Industrial Properties, Afria, and Hexo. They made up almost 30% of the 32-stock portfolio. Innovative Industrial and Medical Marijuana REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, has soared more than 200% this year before Friday's 8% drop. It's also a top-performing IBD50 stock. The San Diego-based company's properties are used for growing medical-use cannabis. As of July 9th, the REIT owned 23 properties in 11 states. The cannabis ETF, with a 0.70% expense ratio, is the lowest cost fund of the trio. The MJ ETF charges 0.75%, while YOLO charges 0.74%. End of article. One thing not mentioned in the article, but I was telling my VIP experience members in our last webinar, was that MJ has a yield of 2.37%. So you are getting that additional return on your money. And it didn't mention in this article that either of the other ETFs have any yield. I don't think they do. But we do have that nice cushion of 2.37% additional performance that we get from owning MJ. So to me, it stands out head and tails above these other two ETFs. And I would suggest that if you're looking at purchasing an ETF for cannabis, you would look at MJ. But the good news is as long as additional ETFs keep coming out, well, they're all buying a lot of the same stocks. So those stocks that we own in MJ are going to continue to benefit from any additional ETF that buys cannabis stocks because they probably want to own GW Pharmaceuticals and Canopy Growth and Aurora and Kronos, etc. So that can only be of benefit to us owning our ETF. We're going to benefit from anybody investing in the other ETFs because they're buying into the same stocks that we already hold within MJ. It's very interesting to note that the fastest growing demographic for cannabis is women over 50 who want to use it for pain relief and health benefits. It's rapidly gaining popularity and acceptance and once we have full federal legality in the United States, I think there's a lot of potential here. Right now, these companies are not allowed to put money into a federal bank, so they have to stash cash in warehouses and wherever they can. And it makes it very difficult for them to do business as well as to even do research on some of these as potential life-saving drugs. So it's very difficult to do that legally and within the parameters that different states require. There's no uniformity across the United States regarding this. Every state has their situation and their laws and their packaging and all of that. So it's hard to get economies of scale right now. Legalization would help a lot and would really open this up for additional business and revenue and the tremendous growth that I think it has ahead of it. If you haven't listened to my other podcasts on cannabis and the benefits of cannabis, some of the projections for how big this market is, I encourage you to go back and listen to those. You can get my full library of podcasts on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. In the upper right hand corner, there's a search box. You could put in cannabis and it will pull up all of those podcasts about cannabis. If you haven't subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available three times a week. And if you're interested in learning more about the VIP experience, my inner investing circle, fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and I'll set up an appointment for us to talk and see if it's a good fit for both of us. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. 
Check out our website, blog and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.